little cane. En lille smule mystik. Lidt intriger. Og mixer det med masser af cool jazz. Og så får man noget ret usædvanligt. Og helt uventet. På TV 1000. Kold som is. Blue ice. What is that then, blue ice? Blue ice is the ice that falls off airplanes. It may never have hit you, but it does fall and reaches the ground. So it's something that comes out of a clear blue sky. It is about the adventures of this guy. He's called Harry Anders, whose hitman retires. He doesn't want anything more to do with the business of skullduggery that he's been asked to do in the past. We needed a girl who, for the sake of the picture, when, when you see her... I might have known a woman driver talking on a bloody car phone. When I see her in the movie, it sort of dropped dead. Wow. Can I help you? I saw her in No Way Out. I could see that she could act. I thought she was the drop deadest looking girl, sexiest looking girl I've ever seen. Isn't he the sweetest man? Oh, Michael, I love you. But there was this reputation. Everybody in Hollywood talks. The girl turns up and she's like a pussycat. I mean, it's so easy to work with. We've had no problem. She's as good as gold. I think I have some collagen put in my lips. Because <laughs> I get to kiss a girl, but I decided against it. Someday. She gets more drawn in than she anticipated, and she um, inadvertently involves him in a whole series of events that actually put him at danger. Harry Anders, 10 years retired and still looking for trouble. You think I'm rusty? This guy is more of a dirty Harry. It's all I know! Very, very tough kind of guy. It's all I know! It's all I know! Very ruthless. Of course, he's not even a hitman anymore. He runs a jazz club. It makes him sort of special. It makes him more, much more sympathetic. Also gives us jazz as a background, foreground, music, everything. It's, it's wonderful. It's like a code, isn't it? Music, especially jazz, for which you have to know how to listen, what to look out for. Which is what happens in life sometimes, isn't it? Something happens, something puzzling, because you don't have the key. Who sent you? To find that out, Mr. Anders, you just have to follow the music, don't you? real good in this movie and uh, and he's really sweet he's very sensitive to you know what you might be going through he's not in his own world he's a very interested actor in, in, in how you do things how things are directed and how things are put together I've never worked so hard in my life you know I, I've been doing my own stuff and a lot of it high up you know, and I, I hate heights and when you think that I'm, I'm one of the producers of this picture and I give myself all this stuff on roofs and cranes and ladders <laughs> I've got nobody else to blame. We're a very small company, Martin Bregman and I, making this picture. I mean, the whole movie cost $7 million. Less money than Bruce Willis got for Die Hard. So we're not in that same league, but we'd like to think we are in the league with imagination and skill. I think we're gonna have trouble here. Stop harassing me. I didn't know he was an agent. I just told him I don't know anything. Don't know anything. It's reality, but it tends to sort of lean one way slightly sort of like rocks the boat a little. I do not know anything! Sort of a Hitchcockian 50s thriller, but with a 90s edge. Villains, women, skullduggery, <laughs> death, everything. That's why it's called Blue Ice. Can't some ease. Send the clock to what you put TV Thompson. Enjoy the show. left those boys. It took me a long time to forgive myself. She wants to see you all. She left us. I don't want to see her. I want to come home. And she won't let me. Jamie Lee Curtis started her career as the target of killers in horror pictures. Now she's the evil one in Mother's Boys, which also stars Peter Gallagher and Joanne Wally Kilmer. Jamie likes the challenge of bringing a terrifying character to life. You get your teeth into it in a different way. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it's, people aren't wrong when they say that playing someone with a slightly more negative uh, character trait is not more interesting. I mean, it's, it's interesting in a different way. I can't tell you what it's done for me today to see the boys. What it's done for you, that's what this is all about, isn't what it's done for you. It's uh, a little more complex and a little more difficult. Um, 
to do. It doesn't mean that I don't enjoy playing someone with great compassion and warmth. You know, if you fight me, I'm just gonna fight you back. It's my nature. Humanitarianly, I think it's obviously much more important to highlight those characteristics in a person, but it's not my job to edit and judge. It's my job to be a good actor. So when I took that part, I knew that it was going to be a challenge. Explain to me how, I, how it could possibly be in their best interest to see a mother who... who the bottom abandoned. line is, she's still their mother, Robert. It's a woman who's abandoned her three children and husband and returns when she finds out the husband is filing divorce to marry someone else. I think I know what you must be feeling. You left. To get a fix on her villainous character, Jamie became a bleached blonde. It's not the first time she has died for a role. Uh, no, but it, uh, you know, it helped immediately change your view of what you were seeing, I think. When you're used to someone, I think it helped. The boys will be grown. They'll hate you. I almost stayed blonde for a while. Too much work. We specifically wanted to create a certain look, and a certain sophistication, a certain worldliness of this woman. And I think we did very well in that. When we met, I was starting this job, and he was a mess. You really love him, don't you? Jamie usually plays a nice girl. How could she portray such a bad person without seeming ludicrous or camp? All I ever wanted was for us to be happy. That's my job. That's why I hope they hired me, because I was going to make it believable. I was going to try to find some reason to believe my, in my own self that I could be that person and that I could understand her. I want you out of here. We should have never left. If you're right, you should have never left. And I think it worked, and I'm, I'm very pleased with that success of the movie. Um, and it's, it's the director, Eve Simino's job. He and I worked closely together to make sure that it didn't become caricaturish, that we stayed real, and that we tried to make every moment believable. You really love him, don't you? Very much. That's unfortunate. We talked about it a lot. I mean, it's, you never know in the movie. It's the hardest part of that movie is the lack of continuity and the lack of any real line for you to play daily because you change backwards and forwards, and then all of a sudden you establish one thing. You have to match to it uh, emotionally, even though you go, oh, God, I shouldn't have done that then because I should have waited and done it then. So, I mean, it's fairly, it's a little more thought out than something else, which is a little looser. But, uh, you know, it's not too rigid. Robert, this is Callie. You better get over here right now. You just have to stop whatever it is you're doing. Jamie started with scary films like Halloween and The Fog. Then she moved to comedies like A Fish Named Wanda and dramas like Blue Steel. I don't stay away from scary films because of, of reminding about my the horror films I made, because that was a long time ago. I don't think people, A, care, or B, remember, or you know, it would affect them one way or another. I don't like scary movies. I don't like to go see them. So for me, it's, I just didn't want to be in them. I just didn't, my interest did not lie in, in being in a scary movie. Um, it's just not what I'm attracted to. Me and Jude planned it. It's not going to get hurt. We're just going to play to scare her. Cass? It's been a long time since I've done anything like this. It was just an opportunity I thought I could do something with. What are you doing here? Let me help you. I think she is the ultimate victim. I think she's a victim of child abuse. I think she's a victim of abandonment. I think she's a victim of maternal abuse, um, isolation, loneliness. So I actually think she, she had a terrible road as a, a child. And I think that all of her actions are a result of that. Give me her hand. I'm stronger than you. I can save her. Don't do it. Jamie Lee Curtis has enjoyed a well-balanced career succeeding in a variety of genres. You might expect that to be the result of careful plotting. I only plot out Roots Home nowadays in Los Angeles. I, I spend hours going, okay, if I take Sunset to Beverly Glen, and then I can cut down to Wilshire, and then take Wilshire to Camden, and go Camden to Pico, and then Pico over to Third, and Third up. I mean, it's a nightmare right now. Do it! No! She's flipping past. Well, I basically plot my driving 
in the city. I don't plot anything else. I don't think you can control anything else. No! Don't do it! Do it! You could lose the boys. Do something.